Welcome to Financial Investing Radio, where you'll learn the secrets for consistent, high probability returns in the financial markets for additional income to change your life. Grant applies consistent, high probability trading systems for the financial markets. He's only recently started sharing these tried and true market secrets. As a gift to listeners, Grant is offering his Roadmap to High Probability Financial Control. Go to FinancialInvestingRadio.com and download yours today. Now, here's your host and trading veteran, Grant Larson. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Financial Investing Radio. This is Grant Larson. I am so excited that you're here today because I have a special guest here with me today. In fact, I just met her just a few weeks ago through another podcast. Her name is Shemen, and she's developed an expertise in investing. That I'm not going to give away what it is she does. She'll, she'll tell us about it. But before I go any further, first let me stop and let you introduce yourself, Shemen. Hi, everybody. My name is Shemen Van Gundy, and I am known as the queen of mobile homes. I'm a mother of five children, and I live in Texas. Excellent. So that's, that's a pretty unique thing. In fact, when, when, I, uh, when I first met Shemen through someone we jointly uh, know, uh, I, I was surprised when she said, I'm the queen of mobile homes. That's like, what are you talking about? She says, yeah, I do investing in mobile homes, it's like the biggest secret. No one knows, and you get these awesome returns. It's like, Shimin, will you please come onto my podcast? So she's like, yeah. So okay. So before we get to how uh, you know what to how she's doing it, right? What well, we want to back up here, and one of the things, Shimin, that I was just really amazed with and impressed with was your backstory. What all the hurdles and challenges you went through to eventually figure out this solution and get to this point. So do you mind sort of rolling the tape back, if you will, and talking about how'd you get started and what are some of the hurdles and challenges you went through to get to this point? Sure. So I'm going to start kind of from the beginning. So it's important to know where somebody comes from so that you know where they're going, right? So I basically, um, I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Iowa and um, there are seven kids in my family and um, I, I grew up there and then um, had some stuff happen as a young teen and so I ended up being in and out of foster care um, for several years and um, went on and got my bachelor's of arts in criminal justice from UTSA so I did the college thing wow. worked for several um, corporations worked for a couple of law firms as a lead paralegal so I did that in 2015. Um, I was at a corporate job and that I had taken. I was running a division. And of course, like so many other people in the corporate world, you're asked to come in and, and, and run a division and, and grow it and do things. And then you're promised certain things. Well, like um, myself, and I'm sure this has happened to a lot of other people, I did that. I was running a division. We were doing well. And I got laid off. So, so you're being a good, so you're being a good corporate citizen, is what you're absolutely, saying. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Yeah. Boom, and here, here comes the message. All right, big right. Up, so, so good corporate citizen, and um, you know the little corporate worker, and I got laid off, and I had, um, and I, I was like, I was kind of blown away. It was very unexpected. I wasn't expecting it because we, we were doing good. I had really grown it, and um, so it was very unexpected, and so. I had just gotten remarried um, in 2013. I, I had um, been through a, a divorce, and so um, I, I got remarried and my husband. Um, and so I, I did all that. And then I, it was so it's really not good when you're like coming to tell your, your new husband that you got laid off. So Must I. Must have a tough day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But I told my husband that I was laid off and I just told him, I said, look, I can't do this anymore. I said, I'm willing and I'm able and I'm smart and I will figure this out and I want to run my own business and I'm going to make us money. And if you'll just give me two years, I will change your life. Wow. And he said, okay, I believe in you. 
So and that's amazing. And so you came up with this two-year window. Did, was that just sort of gut feel? That was just what I told myself. It was at that moment, it was do or die. I mean, I basically had nothing left to lose. And so in my mind, you know, um, when I married my husband, he had no children. He was a bachelor. Uh And so I come into the picture and I have, you know, four children, but three living with me. Right. Okay. So that was, that was, that was a big deal. And then we, we had, you know, our daughter together. And so anyway, um, so, you know, he was a first time dad really. So in my mind, the way that I felt like is that my, the, my kids that I had before, like those are my kids and that was my responsibility to take care of them. Yeah. That was not his responsibility. Now his responsibility was our daughter together, but his responsibility was not my three. My other three, they need, they needed to know that no matter what happened with mom, mom was going to provide and do what she needed to do. And I felt like that also that was, you know, an equitable thing to do in marriage. And so of course he never thought that way. He just, you know, I mean, he would do for them, but it was on his own. It was never a forced thing. That's and, really awesome. And, and it sounds like your back was sort of up against the wall, right? Meaning yeah. well, losing the job. And then of course the marriage goes away. And so you're like, I've got to do something. So, right. okay. So, um, and you know, grow, you know, being in and out of foster care, nobody, nobody teaches you, nobody teaches the, those kids about financials and money and FICO scores. And I didn't learn those things. I was in my thirties. Okay. Like nobody, nobody teaches you that. In fact, um, what happened from it was the biggest wake up call. I actually went through identity theft that was so bad. I actually had a petition for a new social security number. Wow. Dude, were you able to get it? I was, well, I was a man in another state. <laughs> I, it was crazy because when you're in foster care, your protect, your information is not protected. It is not any staff, any foster home that you live in, any staff, that lives there, anybody, those people have access to your date of birth and your social, everybody. There is no security for kids in foster care when it comes to your private information. Wow, wow. There just isn't. So, um, and it's just one of those things. So I kind of learned the hard way through that. So I had a friend who said, hey, the best thing I can tell you to do is read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was like, okay. And so I picked up the book. I did. I picked up the book and I read it. And this is so cliche, but that book changed my life. Really? I actually, for the first time, looked at money in a completely different way. And I was so mesmerized by the book and so taken back. It spoke to my soul that I started doing my paralegal researching skills, right? And I got on the internet and I started look, reading and looking about Robert Kiyosaki and then found out that Kim Kiyosaki, his wife, had a whole separate program called Independent Women. And you could go on there and you actually can sign up for free classes. They, they're wow. like, they'll teach you like all these different things about real estate like for free. That's incredible. And, or you can pay like $99 if you want to learn another class that's two hours or whatever. So I just started getting intrigued. Well, I found out that they were having like an independent women conference, like an introductory thing, I guess, okay. in San Antonio. <clears throat> so I live um, between San Antonio and Austin in the hill country of Texas. And so I drove to San Antonio and I went to the introductory and the speaker was Nicole D'Ambrosio, who actually um, had appeared on Celebrity Apprentice. Oh, wow. And so she was there. And so I was really, really um, excited about what they said. And so everybody was putting their names in to the hat for a drawing and they drew my name and I, it was a three It was a free three day basic training. Oh, are you kidding me? Wow. Yeah. All right. And, Right. And so I went to the basic training. It was over Mother's Day weekend. And I just told my husband, I like, I just want to go. This is what I want for Mother's Day. And he's like, okay. I said, I just want you to stay with the kids. You know, and so at this point in time, you know, my little one was not even two years old. She was like 18 months old. And then, you know, and then I also had a three year old or a three and a half year old. So I had like babies. Okay. So you're busy. You got babies. You're low on money. 
Uh, yes. Something's driving you to get this done, though. What is it? It's my family. Like, I need to figure it out. Yep. Okay? Yep. So, um, and I wasn't going to, I mean, I have never, ever had anybody really believe in, in me or tell me that they believed in me except wow. my husband. Um, my previous husband didn't even tell me that. So, um, so those were powerful words to me. Again, those words spoke to my soul, right? It was like my husband released me to go out and be who I really was meant to be. And so I went to this basic training and I am the trainer was Dr. Mary Jo Wilson. And she has been an elite legacy mentor and international trainer for over 15 years. She's the foremost expert on tax liens and deeds. She's called, she's called Dr. Daxling, and you have to have her on your podcast. She'd be phenomenal. That's awesome. But, um, but she um, became my mentor, and I signed up for a package, and I actually sold things that I owned to pay for two classes and my mentor. Like, I oh, sold that. That's dedication, Shemel. Yeah. That really is. Like I sold jewelry. I, I, I sold stuff. Like, I was like, and then my husband funded the rest. So, like, I came up. It was $20,000. I came up with 12000 on my own, and my husband, you know, helped me with the rest. Wow. And so, um, and that's how I did it. So we, my first class was called core, which was crucial operations of real estate, which is now momentum in elite legacy. Um, but it kind of taught you the basics or the background. It, you know, taught you, taught you the foundation. And then I chose wholesaling because I had no money and no credit, of course. And there's all these misnomers about wholesaling and true wholesaling is not getting a house at 65% of what the, of what the, um, the, the, the price is, right? Market value, okay. Right, right, exactly, the market value. It's actually a whole true wholesale is when you get something under contract and you assign your rights of the contract to another investor. So it's an assignment. And you oh, can do I see. all day long and you don't have to have a real estate license to do it. So um, anyway, so I took wholesale and that was in May. So from May to the end of June, I took my core and my wholesale classes. And I had done a couple of wholesale. Like I did a, I wholesale the house on June the 3rd and I made $9,000 on the assignment agreement and it was Ab in Abilene. So what I did was I just went to areas where I knew nobody else was. And so um, I did it all through Craigslist and I didn't even look at the property. I actually asked a realtor to go look at it and take pictures, and I, I did it all virtually. That's oh, wow. That's impressive. So, so let me ask you a couple questions on it because it sounds like that with a back, when you're back against the wall, the desire to take care of your family, you sell stuff that you have, so you use just the assets and the resources that are available to you to get the learning, and then, and then you get started, and you are – you're not even able to go to the properties you work through. It sounds like you're willing to exhaust every possible resource available to you to get going. Am I getting well, this right? Absolutely. I mean, I found the property on Craigslist. Okay. Um, so I found the property on Craigslist and then, you know, and then um, advertised it and did everything that they said to do and got in contact with the realtor there, found a title company and we closed and I made $9,000 and it was the, literally the easiest $9,000 I've ever made. And I'm like, Holy heck, this works. You're blown so, away at that. <laughs> I went to the I went to the tax sale and um that week as well. I went to the tax sale and I found a couple mobile homes that I wanted to to purchase the the lien, you know, the liens on or whatever for and um, that. And so in Texas, it's all usually it's liens or deeds. So I would have ended up with the mobile home, but you don't necessarily would have gotten the land that the mobile home sits on. So as I was talking to investors about mobile homes and, um, you know, and maybe trying to get a mobile home here and there, I really noticed that there was such a negative connotation. Everybody kept calling them trailer trash. Wow. And I had had an investor approach me and say, hey, I have all these mobile home deals that have title issues or statement of ownership issues, which in Texas, we don't have titles. We have statement of ownership. Okay. And um, would you take them? And I said, sure. So I immediately got all, you know, several deals um, 
you know, kind of thrust on me working through these issues. And so I made really good relationship with the clients, really good relationship with the other investor who was sending them to me. So all of a sudden that investor told these other investors that had mobile home leads that they didn't know anything about. And so they started sending them my way. <laughs> and so June 5th, I um, made another $5,000 wholesaling a mobile home. Oh. So, and this is something other than what I, other than what I'm going to be doing, which we'll talk about later. Um, yeah. cause I don't want to give it away, but nobody teaches anybody how to wholesale mobile homes. Well, yeah, it's not it's like, like the a, easiest cash you could ever make. It's yeah. It's not like people even think about that. Cause typically when we're thinking real estate, it's, you know, it's detached homes, it's, you know, apartments, it's, you know, commercial, whatever, but never, do I hear people talking about mobile homes? And so you sort of stumbled a little bit into that, it sounds like. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I had had a couple of inquiries about mobile homes, but, um, and so I talked to my, so my, so after that, um, Dr. Mary Jo Wilson, my mentor, she came down and mentored me for three days. Um, it was July 13th, 14th, and 15th of 2015. And she came down and mentored me we got a couple of deals under contract for mobile homes. And she's like, look, this has fallen into your lap. And I'm like, okay, and I'm going to run with it. And so I ran with mobile homes and also probates. So between July, um, basically between July 15th and September 23rd of 2015, I made over $180,000 in deals <laughs> between probate and mobile homes. Um, so doing a couple probate deals, doing a couple wholesale on houses, and then the rest of mobile homes, I made about one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. You got to have been blown away. I mean, uh, what what did your husband think? He he had to be. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then um, and then September twenty fourth of twenty fifteen, our house caught on fire. What the house that you, your family was living in? Yes, it caught on fire. Oh no. Um, my my son was sick and he was sleeping in the bedroom and um I was gonna leave but something told me not to and I turned the oven on to clean it and it it was the first time we, we moved in that house in twenty thirteen. So it was the first time that I at the end of twenty thirteen actually. And it was the first time that I had ever um the first time that I had ever used the cleaner on that stove and the the oven caught on fire. Um, and so we had, um, our house didn't necessarily burn to the ground, but it had a lot of smoke damage. Okay. Um, and so we were displaced, um, the four kids and my husband and I, for, um, we, were, we were displaced until, uh, I, was, I think it was December 30th. Wow, three months uh, or so? Yeah, three to four months. Wow. Wow. So during that time, I did what I could, and I just kept building my buyer's list. So the other thing that you want to do is I also was taught by my mentor to build a buyer's list because the worst thing that you could ever do in the world is have something then that you have nobody to sell it to, right? Yeah. So I um, came up with this tagline for my buyer's list that just is crazy. It'll yield about 400 uh, about 350 to 400 leads or a list for buyers in about three months. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. And it's just the certain verbiage um, that we use and it works really well. And so I basically relaunched in 2016 and just hit the round running um, and um, have just been running ever since. And so, of course, now I'm international and in Ireland. So, yeah. So, that's an amazing story. Was that uh, like a three-year period of time then that, uh, from when it all began? Yeah. So, uh, July 15th of this year will be basically three years since my mentor came out. As a, so, wow. Yeah. So, that's, that's incredible. In, in three years, I've done over 300 mobile home deals, and um, really? I'm international. Mm-hmm. Wow, what a shock, you know, and when I think about how you got started with uh, pretty much zero assets, a um, lot of desire, a lot of passion, a lot of just true grit, I guess, right, to, to go make it happen. Well, yeah, at that point in time, I would have stood on my head and blown bubbles. 
<laughs> I wouldn't have cared. I mean, I, I, you know, I want to say that I would have done whatever it took. And when I say I would have done whatever it took, I seriously mean that I would have done whatever it took. Yeah. Like, if I had to walk through the streets naked, okay, it wouldn't have mattered. I would have done it. And so when my mentor came out, she said, I just have three rules. And I said, okay. And she said, here's what they are. Are you ready? And I said, yes. And she said, um, you do what I say when I say with no debate. And wow. she said, can you do that? And I said, I can. Now she didn't say I couldn't ask questions. She just said that I couldn't argue with her. Like I couldn't debate her. This is, she's You're telling me what to do to move my life forward. And that's what I needed to do. And I said, okay. And I just knew okay. that if I listened and I was coachable, that I could have what she had. I mean, that was like, I looked at my life and I'm like, okay, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over, hoping for a different result. Okay. So like, I don't watch TV anymore. Like at all. I really think it's a big waste of my time. I read and I, I do have other things, but I have so many other things in my life that I want to do other than watch television. Every now and then I'll watch, you know, I'll go to the movies and I'll do that with my family, but I really don't watch television. And so that was kind of, I mean, th this doesn't come without sacrifice. Like something has to, something has to give. Yeah. So sacrifice, and, commitment, a, a higher cause, a higher purpose, yeah. right? Like, like your family. Yeah. And so right. and, yeah, and so I just knew that if I didn't make changes in my life, that everything was going to stay the same. And I just, I just, I can't even t tell you what happened. Just uttering those words to somebody um, like that that says, "I believe in you." When you are in a situation where you're in a, an abusive situation and, a, and you know an abusive. Yeah. And you've been in and out of foster care. And then I was abused in foster care too. Like it wasn't a good experience for me. Oh, wow. And so, and so when you do that, like you, it is very, very hard to ever believe that you're worthy of anything because in your mind, you're like, okay, if my own mother can't love me, like if, if my own family can't love me, then nobody else is going to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's amazing. So this mentor made uh, a massive change. Oh that my God. Fun. Yes. I like so much so that I, I told Dr. Mary Jo Wilson that if, if, if she ever like when and if she ever, like she will never have to worry about anything. She'll never be in a nursing home. Never. I will take care of her. Like that's I don't amazing. care. Yes. I feel like I owe her my life, my family's just That's amazing. everything that we are. Um, and now, you know, now we've teamed up and now we're doing things together and we have a couple businesses together. And so now it's like, I'm right there in there with her. And so it's really awesome because now this, you know, relationship has blossomed and turned into something else and did something else. And this has all just been from, from doing it. And so I, I would always tell my daughter, um, who's 17 now, Bella, I would always tell her, I'd be like, why are you so afraid of no? And so it finally dawned on me during this process that we as mothers and fathers tell our kids no every day. Why the heck are we afraid of no? No doesn't bite you. No doesn't slap you. No does not physically harm you. No does not physically harm you. Yet we are so scared to be told no at every day. <laughs> It is yeah. ridiculous. Think yeah. about it. The power, the power of no. Absolutely. Right. And so I was just like, okay, I'm going to go for no till I get a yes. But so many people have a hard time being told no. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we as adults tell our kids no every day. <laughs> it, 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 it ends up uh, pre-programming them, right? I, I mean, it's just, you know, we, we really do. We, we're not afraid to tell our children no, but we're so afraid to be told no to. Yeah. So, you know, I, I always tell people like, what's the worst that can happen? But so many people are gripped by fear. This is another crazy stat for you, Grant. Um, so I know that one of the stats, and this is most, this is most um, educational platforms like fortune builders, but I, I know elite legacies. And so I know that like 96% of the students never actually go out and do a deal. 
Ever. After they go through all the training? After they go through all the training, because in their mind, they're like, one more class, one more class, one more class. But they're so gripped by fear. Oh, Can wow. you imagine being so crippled by fear? Like, I feel like I just need to give this pep talk to everybody about, okay, let's have an actual, logical, non-emotional conversation about no. <laughs> Because there's so many other b things out there that can hurt you other than no. And we are so afraid to be told no. Yeah, it is such a powerful influence uh, in our lives, isn't it? And it, generally, it's, uh, you know, we end up being our own worst, uh, worst enemy, right? That's, I think that's what you're saying. We hold ourselves back. Exactly. And so I think that, and, and, and it's in this mindset. And I had to go through, as I was going through this process, you know, every day I'm doing positive affirmations. I'm changing everything. I watch The Secret every single day. It was on my TV plane for six solid months. Well, now what show is that you said? It's called The Secret. It's oh, about the, the law of attraction. Okay. It's by, um, Bob Proctor in it. I highly recommend people watching it. It's on Netflix. You can see it free. It is all about the law of attraction and about how your thoughts and actions, how, how it, it leads you to exactly the life of your dreams. And um, Jack Canfield's on there, who's wrote the whole Chicken Soup for the Soul series and ah, right. everything. I highly recommend it. But, you know, it, it was a life change for me. So I'm telling myself positive affirmations every day in the in the mirror. And so then my little girl, my Alora, um, my now seven year old started joining me. And so one morning I woke up and I'm hearing her say she has this Cinderella mirror that says dreams can come true. And she's standing in front of the mirror and she's like, I am smart. I am kind. I am amazing. I am a good big sister. Um, you know, I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's uh, right. All these things. And then she turns around and says it to her baby and to Paisley. And she's like, you are a good baby. You are, um, you know what I'm saying? Um, you are just saying the same thing. You are wonderful. You are smart. You are such a good baby. You're beautiful. You're kind. And so, you know, now I have like this seven-year-old who he basically gets up every morning and looks in the mirror and says positive affirmations and then says I'm their sister, right? You know, what I find amazing is, you know, so far what you've really shared is the secret of the change has been the secret of the mindset change, yeah. right? In other yeah. words, the, the real transformation, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the way that they tell stories in Hollywood, right? Like when you watch a movie and you see someone go on a journey, there's actually two journeys going on. There's the physical journey, but then the, there's the internal journey where they become a different person. And, and it sounds like that's really what you're saying. Yeah, you went through this financial journey of investing and figuring out how to actually provide and take care of your family through investing. But the real change, the real journey is what happened with the, with the internal transformation. You look at yourself different now. You feel different. You, 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 you become different as a result of that. Right. I like that a lot. Exactly. Well, so and that's, and that's the whole point because you have to start systematically changing how you think or even feel, right? Yeah. And I had all of these, um, mis you know, all these misnomers. Now I look at, you know, money and credit cards. Credit cards are nothing but OPM. They're other people's money. Yep. Use them. If, yep. you, if you've got a 0% interest, that's free money for 18 months. Use it. Use it and start getting a return. Like start, you know, start having your money make money for you instead of trading time for dollars. For dollars for that. So it's been quite the, uh, quite the fascination to hear you talk through how you've gone through this journey yourself. Um, uh, what, what, uh, what I'd like to do is to see if, if I could invite you back for another episode, and if you wouldn't mind, would you, well, first of all, would you come back for another episode? Absolutely. Because what I'd like to ask you to do in the next episode that we talk is, I'd like for you to share some of the components of your solution around this mobile investing strategy. Not to give away your secret sauce, but where you're going with this, and uh, maybe bring some hope to others that are listening, How they also might uh, somehow participate in this as well. Would you be willing to do that? Absolutely. Oh, very good, very and good. And there are two things I would like to end with so that 
people will kind of know, maybe they'll be keeping an open mind for the next, for the next podcast to come. Right. Yeah. But, well, number one is it doesn't matter. The, it does not matter the cost of the shovel when you're digging for gold. Hmm. Okay. And then the second one is, is that mobile homes are little boxes that spit out cash. And I'm going to explain to you how. That's awesome. Uh, that's really awesome. Thank you so much, Man Schmidt. This has meant a lot to me and to our listeners that you would take the time to share this journey. I hope everyone appreciated it because when I met her and started to hear the backstory, I was like, oh gosh, we, we got to get this uh, in, into our community. Schmidt, thanks for joining and uh, everyone, thanks for listening. And until next time, don't worry about the cost of your shovel when you're digging for gold. Thank you for joining Grant on Financial Investing Radio. Remember to subscribe and leave feedback. Don't forget to download your free roadmap to high probability financial control before you make an investment decision. Visit financialinvestingradio.com now.